Howdy y'all. I hope you don't get too mad at me. I kind of did something when you weren't looking. And uh, just me and Buddy the dog out here today. But we had some good progress. And uh, I'm going to make some more progress today, hopefully. Let me show you what I did. If you notice, that piston, I got it popped out of there. So the other day when Dad and I hammered on it, we got it loose. And uh, we got it a little bit back from the bearing. So while I was out here, I thought, oh, what the heck. I'll tap the piston and tap it back towards um, the crank and uh, see if it'll move a little bit. And I did. And when I did that, it moved very easily. So I thought, oh, what the heck. So I came around the other side. I put my 2x4 on the end of that connecting rod and just hit it that direction. And lo and behold, we got a piston coming out. So I'm a quarter of the way there. <laughs> One of four. So today I'm going to work on the other three. And that may also require getting the torch out and firing up the rosebud on the torch so that we can get some heat on them. So, pardon the uh, wind noise outside. It's very windy here. So, the other reason you all weren't watching when uh, I popped this piston out this morning is because my memory card was full on my camera. And me being the... Uh, technological Neanderthal that I am and uh, not having my son around anymore to point me in the right direction I ran to town and got a new memory card to fill up so here we go let's see oh while I was in town I picked up a piece of overpriced hardwood to pound these pistons with so uh, I'm gonna give it a try success. Those bad boys do have a lot of rings. Got it out. This is the bearing surface on the top. There's that little dowel pin right there I was talking about. And uh, yeah, one two, three, four, four rings. I guess there's nothing in this down here by the skirt. Looks like it's just empty or open. So, interesting, but definitely good news. Very happy about that. So, clean it up, soak them, see what we can do. Here's the bearing that came out of that one. A little corrosion, but again, they're not worn terrible. No super unusual wear patterns in these. Got the bolts out too, that one. That one was the least of our trouble. Uh, it was the other ones that I'm a little worried about. All right, and there is the insides. Imagine they're all going to look around, around the same. Goal is to get, I'd like to get these ones out next, but I can tell already I'm going to need some heat. I'm going to start on this one here on the top and heat this. I'm going to try hitting the sleeve, heating the sleeve, and uh, see if that works.
doing my tool any good. So as you can see, I really got some heat on it this time. So I'm going to go back there and try and pound on it again. My goal is to get this top one out. And that one's already out. And if we can get this one out, my goal is to try and turn the crank and turn this crank away from those top ones and we can pound them back and forth from the top. Well, I've been pounding on it. And I'd like to say that it's moving, but I am not seeing it. And as you can see, previous attempts have nicked up the bottom of that piston, which is what I want to avoid doing. But she is stuck. Maybe just let it cool and it'll break free once it cools. All right, so our plan is we're going to make a kind of a cap that will sit on top of this rod here that we can drive this piston out with. And Dad's over on the welding bench taking some measurements. All right, so we've found ourselves in the position to make another homemade tool here. And the plan of attack is to use this bearing cap as a pattern. And we're going to cut out, as you can see, the chalk outline here. We're going to cut out some sleeves that will sit right on the end of the rod. We're going to use bolts as guides, just loose. These will go through, they'll be welded onto this plate, something like this. And we'll use these as guides so that we don't have anything slip when we're hitting it. And then we're going to put some spacers on there so that the impact is spread out completely across the rod. And then we're going to drill these out so that these guides will go through there. And then we're going to use probably a spacer or a stack of washers here. And all we want to gain is to get that... Uh, piston to move even a quarter inch or a half an inch so that we can pound it back from the top and just get it to move so that we can get it loose. Bother that bearing, I wouldn't think. Got it? Yeah, got it. Go test fit it. Yeah, there we go. 
that will fit in there and then we just put some spacers in here and then we can pound on this right here with the sledge and I'm hoping that the wrist pin in the piston is heavy enough to take a little bit of that let me go finish welding this it looks like it's gonna fit perfectly And I know it's a farmer weld, but what can I say? time and make sure it works. I love welding. I'm not very good at it. I know that was one thing um, my grandfather had a pacemaker put in. Oh, I think it was in the early 2000s, late 90s, and the most devastating part of that was the fact that he couldn't weld anymore. And uh, when he found that out, it was just absolutely devastating. This is the guy that taught me how to make my own tools and do all that sort of stuff, so I do cherish what he taught me. Okay, so it looks like it fits like a glove. Um, Dad's building the spacers that we're going to put. So we're going to put spacers in here, and then Dad's building some nice flat pieces of shim so that we don't damage these into these rods here that will go between the spacer and our impact point. And then this piece of, I don't know what that is, three quarter inch thick steel. And this, and we'll see, see if we get any movement out of it. Get this one out of here, I think we're gonna be in a better position. Cause then we can turn the crank because the crank will turn away from these two center ones that are up all the way. And we got our rod bearing back over here. Our cap, number one and two. My dad was very proud of these stamps, especially the one here on number 11. There. So dad's gonna kind of drew up the spacers for our tool on the old South Bend lathe. So Dad got them trued up nice and flat on the lathe, and I'm going to just stick a rat tail file through there and clean them up. Okay, so these are the spacers Dad just turned out on the lathe and cleaned up. And right now he's working on the flat pieces that are going to go up against the bottom of the uh, rod. And we're debating right now whether we need to... Weld those on here, or we should leave them loose. It's, we're going to have a bunch of th sloppy stuff in here. Um, and the more that we can weld, the better. But uh, my argument is that we leave some of this not welded. And that way we can add more spacers, more washers, more nuts. If we need more distance to put, pound on. All right, so right now I'm just taking the uh, grinder and cleaning up the sprues and kind of rounding that uh, off so that we don't have any sharp points that will cause any damage to the rods. All right, now you can see the concept here. 
we're just doing some last minute test fitting on those spacers there. Got your narrow side in? Yes. That's weird. Something's holding us. We had it closer than that. Pull your spacer back. Did we pull that one all the way back? Swap them. Why? This one fit perfect. I think they need to go like that. Yes, we're hitting a little bit there. I'm not in all the way over here yet. It's still hitting right there on the top. Okay, I'll take it over on the big grinder. I see this one too. Let me go fix it. All right, so Dad's over on the lathe, truing up the bushings so that they're equal. They were a little bit off, and I dusted off an old welder that I had. First welder I bought, um, it got me by. Uh, it was nice to have for little projects. Flux cord wire, doesn't weld very clean, but in a situation like this where I can't reach where we're working with the welder I have, I need to get an extension cord since we moved into this shop. Uh, we're going to put our fixture in here and I'm going to tack weld everything together. Get it closer. There we go. All right, I got it. Turn that up to high. So our fixture is ready. And it fits like a glove. So next step is to apply a little pressure on it. And yes, that welding is god-awful ugly welding. But I think it'll work. Yeah, and then I'll, then I'll be sure it stays up tight with the, with the stick. Got some safety glasses on? I got glasses. All right, here goes. I saw it move. Did it? Hold it, hold it. Let me measure it. I saw it move. I can measure it. Look out. If it did, it wasn't much. I swear it looked like it moved. I don't know. It might just been that your thing backed off. It could be. Be sure it's up tight before you whack it. We're good. Sounds good. Hold it. Sounds like it's... No, not yet. I wonder if we're going to need some it, more it heat. Might have, it might have... I thought about like a six feet. There it goes. That moved it. Uh, you're, popping, you're popping the sleeve and all out. Well, who cares? Send yeah. it. Send it. I can take it over on the press. The, the whole see the whole sleeve is coming out. Oh, I, I thought it moved. Yeah. See here. Well, good. It, the whole the sleeve and all is coming. I'll take it. That's the one we're going to need a sleeve anyway. More than likely. And then I can take it over on the press. And... You can see the sleeve and everything's coming out. It's coming. It moves with every whack. You're about out of room, aren't you? Yes. It's almost through. You know what? It's loose. It'll now. come out with wood. Pull your fixture out. You can tap it out with your hardwood because it looks like it's coming pretty easy now. Can you kind of catch yeah, I'll, it? Yeah, I'll watch it. There's a ring up there. Yeah, that's your own. Well, you got to hit on the sleeve. Well, I can't because it's already up in there past the skirt. Well, so? You can't hit it. You don't. Here. There. Oh, it's out. It's out. Woo! 
Success. Oh, that's ugly. We gotta get past this O-ring. There you go. You got it? Got it. You got it? Yes, sir. Well, we got her out, sleeve and all. I'm gonna take it over on the press and press it out later. Let's see if we can turn that engine over. Just rock it. Let's rock it back and forth. Here, give me that. Go back and forth. I got it wedged. Screw it. Boy. Let go. All right, now go. Now just keep rocking it. You know, something might be holding us. The camera. Timing gear, maybe? I don't know. It acts like something's holding. I don't. You gotta push the jaw up there. Yes, I know. Something's holding, huh? Yeah. I'll just punch out those bolts and we can use it on them too. They're almost to the top. They might come out without the sleeve. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, except our fixture is going to need some work to go fit in there. Where is it? Oh, yeah. We might have to knock this off here and some of this so that it'll, it'll go in the, in the crank. So we are 50% of the way done. As you can see, that one, the sleeve and everything came out with it. And... We actually can't get these pins out here, the index, the bearing caps to the rods. So, Deb's center punching over there, you can hear it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drill out our fixture so we can put it on there and pound these ones out just like we did the last one. And hopefully, with any luck, it'll work. There is flax seed even inside here, Dad. Huh? Inside the water jacket, there's flax seed. So Dad's drilling a little hole in our fixture off to the side to clear those dowel pins in the bearing caps. Got the sleeve and the piston all in one on the hydraulic press. So the plan is just to put a little pressure on here. And uh, hopefully it'll pop loose. So I'm going to leave it with a little pressure on it and go do some other things and see what happens. Ready? Yeah. Like yeah, let's look at it because no, not yet. Let me be sure that's not messing up that little pin. So I Where, did. I did. Where's the light? Okay, we're all right. All right, whack it. That felt like it did something. Ready? Yeah. One more. There it went. That last one, I really felt it. Nah, it didn't do nothing. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh. It's coming. Yeah, it's out past the lip here. It'll it don't have far to go. It's sure going hard the whole way. I don't Ooh. know why. Did we hurt that bearing surface? Nah, you ain't gonna. We never touched it. All right. I think you got a little bit to go. Yet. You want to go catch it if it comes out? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Yep. There it is. I remember it got us right to where we needed to be before. 
you want me to get it here. Yeah. I got it. You got it? Yeah. I'm going to stamp these. Well, whatever you want to do with Mark. This is number three from the front. I wonder how you get them pins out. See this in a roll. Yeah. Oh. I moved it. Oh. Take. I took some of this PB blaster. Yeah, there, there you go. There it goes. And I bend the tube. No, no. Look. It Do this. Give me that. Get it in the oiler. Now it'll Now it's getting freed up. Yeah. There we go. So this one's start to free up too now. Remember how it was? Yeah, I did the same thing. I squirted some in that oiler. <sighs> so you can see in there, we might be able to hone this one. I really do think it's like pretty minor surface rust, but the piston did move out a little bit, a little bit. There it went. Something gave, I think. Take a peek. Yep. Sleeve and all. All right, let's go for it. Let's get her done. Yeah. He's going. Easy dub. Let's get that bearing out of there if we can. Where is it? This thing was working nice. I don't think you can spin it. I can if I pull it back. Uh-uh, you can't because that little little oil groove in the middle holds it. Mm. Hit it with your stick, I bet it'll go. It was going pretty easy. You're right. It's it's uh got the top in, see if what it does. You want me to hold it? Just make sure it don't fall. Like I that. will. <clears throat> yeah, hold it. You're, you're done. <clears throat> Got it? Yeah. There it is. Here you go. Grab it. <clears throat> There's right. number three. They're out. All but number four sleeve. I don't... I don't see any huge rust pits. I think we might be able to hone these. We might be able to get away with one. There's the tool. Our, our farmer rig saved the day. For sure. And we still have the sleeve in number four, which was, I think, the least of our worries. So but all of them came out. Um, I was over on the press and I was able to press the piston out of the sleeve on number one. So I'm going to throw a wrench up here and see if I can turn this crank. Well, let's go see if we can pop them out. You missed it here. That's just oil. That's all that is. Working a little more. There she goes. It's tight. It's been a few years since she's moved like that. She's going to be sore. Those wrist pins on the pistons were rusted up and held up too, so we spray a little oil in there and move it and spray a little oil, keep moving. The pistons. All right, we're gonna take the other pistons, 
over on the press and uh, see if we can get them out of the sleeve. We got two out of the other sleeves, so we got two more to go. And uh, I think the plan is going to be every time I come out here in the shop just to spray oil in here and work it back and forth. You can see the rust dripping out of there. Just needs worked. None of the bearings or components look too terrible. Put some pressure on it and uh, let me go get a hammer and we'll tap around there a little bit. All right, we got pressure. This is the one that the piston started to come out. I don't know if you can see right there. We're not on it, are we? No. So we got some pressure on this with the press. And Dad's going to throw a little heat on it with the torch. This one's kind of sticky. Which one is this number? This is the one that we, it moved an eighth of an inch, and I don't know why it won't pop. I think this is number two, right? Uh, yes. I have it stamped somewhere. Most of that piston is from here down. Yeah. And get the sleeve to expand with that pressure on there. At some point I'm expecting to hear a pop. Again, you can go more down here. Yeah, there's pressure on it. It's funny, number one came out without... Yeah. Me. And that was the one that we thought was the worst... This it two had the three, most scale in it. This two and three might be a problem. They were up all the way. is mind-boggling. Just leave it with some pressure in it and maybe as the pressure it, changes outside and stuff and it that, heats and it cools, cools, it'll maybe pop loose. Howdy y'all, so I got a quick update on where we got, where our progress ended on the D4. So, um, first off, uh, one of the most important things I think, we were able to get this engine freed up and working and turning and because it was stuck over center for so long I keep coming out here and I put a little oil in there and spray some in the crank and uh, and just keep turning it and keeping it loose and a little more oil and loosen it up so pretty good progress there and I did refer to this incorrectly on a previous video. Yes, I know this is not the flywheel, <laughs> but we do need to find one of those uh, clutch discs and with the ring gear with the broken teeth here. Definitely going to need to get that one fixed. But we did get all four of the pistons out of here. And there's still sleeve here in number four. Not a big deal, we'll get it out. Um, the important part is we got it moving. Over here on the bench we got all the pistons that were in the machine out. Um, I think there's one over on the press at the moment. We have 
put a punch number in each one of these, one, three, and so on, so we don't get them confused. I don't know that it's going to make that big of a difference, but just in case, uh, the pistons we marked as well, number four and so on. We kind of ding this one up. This was the first one we were tempted to get out of there and uh, clean that up with a file. I think the pistons are going to be fine. Uh, the sleeves, maybe. I think they're going to be okay. We may be able to ream those out, like my grandfather said, and clean them up. I know we're going to need to find at least one. I've already ordered the O-rings for these. And this was the last one I got out. It's just sitting in there. A couple good uh, love taps with the hammer and a block of wood. We'll get that out of there. I found that the trick to get these pistons out of these sleeves, these liners, was to take them over on the hydraulic press, put some pressure on the pistons, uh, using the tool we made actually, from the end of the rod, and just leave it under pressure, and then we'd heat these liners with the torch. And they didn't immediately pop. I'd let them set overnight, uh, the ambient temperature here at night. It's getting pretty cold. Last night it was around 7. So once it cooled down, I think they pop, and they pop loose. And the next morning, the next day, I can come out, put a little pressure on them with the hydraulic press, and they come out. They don't come out easy. There's a lot of grit and grime on here, and they take some effort to get them out of there. But they come out, and uh, we got them all. So that's good news. As far as the head goes, we are still going to try and get this thing fixed. I, we have somebody that can do it. It's going to be pricey, it's going to be expensive, but Dad and I are really invested in this project. We love this tractor and we want to see it going. So this tractor has been kind of a labor of love for my father and I. Um, it's been good. It's got our mind off of things, and it's been a common goal. So we just can't bring ourselves to give up on it. We just want to see it run. So still working on it, still full steam ahead. Um, yeah, I think the biggest hang-up at this point is going to be whether we can find the parts to fix everything. The steering clutches are still froze. Um, they may pop loose. The main clutch is, was good. Um, you know, it shifted through all the gears. No problem, so. Uh, we'll see. We'll see where we get. And, and it would be nice to paint this machine up. Still got to get the oil pump off of here. It's it's a bit aggravating. Uh, I think I need to just take these bolts out up here and pull it loose. I imagine it's free. Everything in there is free when I turn it. The cam moves, the gears move, uh, so no issues there. So I suspect that uh, to get this apart and clean it up, I need to take those bolts out. So I'll, do, I'll be doing that soon. Otherwise, I think we're in a good position, a good progress on this machine. I do want to thank you all for watching, and uh, I really do appreciate if you like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Uh, it helps my dad and I, and I really do appreciate the very kind comments in the comments section. Uh, it's, it's great that we're actually touching so many people all around the world, and we do appreciate you watching. So, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.